And I want to bring in former U.S. attorney and MSNBC legal analyst Barbara McQuaid on that new reporting from the New York Times. It was about the fact that the DOJ apparently was looking into former White House counsel Don McGahn. Barbara, you wrote an op-ed for MSNBC asking a simple question. Did the DOJ target Trump's enemies using improper subpoenas? With what we know now and the new information on McGahn, what do you think the answer to that question is? I think that it uh, it appears very concerning. In fact, one of the things that uh, I think is a red flag that all is not right here is the fact that the Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco has ordered an Inspector General investigation of this. Today, Attorney General Merrick Garland said that they will move swiftly to investigate this. So it is not illegal to get the phone records for anybody because uh, nobody is above the law. But to get phone records from members of Congress and reporters and someone like a, an attorney requires very, very uh, high obstacles to overcome. The sheer number of sensitive people whose phone records were obtained alone causes grave concern. But the fact that none of the prior attorneys general say that they were aware that this happened, I think, uh, has an awful lot of smoke. And so an investigation is appropriate to see if there's any fire there. To your knowledge, is there any precedent for this in history? The subpoenaing of phone records for members of Congress and or the White House counsel? Um, I am not aware of any for the White House counsel whatsoever. That is an attorney and the attorney for the president. It's hard to imagine a more sensitive position for an attorney and the attorney-client privilege. So that is highly unusual. With regard to members of Congress, sometimes in the public corruption arena, when uh, members of Congress are under investigation mm -hmm. for accepting bribes, for example, that might be a rare scenario where you would get that approval to look at their phone records. But in this instance, where you're talking about a leak, especially someone like Adam Schiff, who as the head of the House Intelligence Committee has access to the highest levels of classified information. He is already entrusted with that. It really does seem unprecedented. Yeah, it, it seems unusual, but I just wanted for context uh, to make sure we understood that it is unprecedented. It's not, there, there really is so little to compare it to. And today we learned that the top national security official at the Department of Justice is resigning amid the fallout from these revelations in the Times. We're told the resignation has been planned for some time, but what do you make of the timing of this? Because, you know, new reporting that looks pretty bad um, and a, a resignation. Yeah, I don't know. You know, he does say that he had planned to leave at about this time. His successor has been nominated, so this would be sort of a natural time to leave. But certainly he is somebody who would have been in the loop on this. I believe the reporting is that he arrived at the Justice Department in 2018 after these investigations began. But nonetheless, as the Assistant Attorney General for the National Security Division, he is someone who would have been briefed that this was ongoing. And we've read that those mm -hmm. gag orders that were in place, not in a appropriate uh, to have a gag order if you're going to have uh, a grand jury subpoena. But the renewal of those gag orders, I think, would have triggered some briefing to the acting attorney general, to the assistant attorney general. So it seems likely that he would have been aware of these investigations as well. So not only does it seem suspect to have begun them, um, to allow them to continue if they were inappropriate would also be, I think, someone who needs to be interviewed uh, and to answer some questions. Well, it seems odd that they wouldn't have knowledge of the subpoenas at the beginning if at some point they learned that this was happening through the uh, renewal and the gag orders later on. I mean, Jeff Sessions, Bill Barr and Rod Rosenstein have, since this new reporting has come out, all denied knowledge of any of this. So is that is that weird? I mean, it, it seems to me like, as you just explained, they should know. But is it weird that they didn't or they claim they didn't? It, it is. Um, it, that's a red flag for me. Uh, to if if a prosecutor were to use a subpoena uh, to get records from a member of Congress or from the press, uh, it would be consistent with the policy of the Justice Department to get approval 
or at least notice to the attorney general, depending on who the target of that was. And so between Jeff Sessions and Rod Rosenstein uh, and William Barr, for them not to know, does seem highly unusual. There was that little window when Matt Whitaker was involved, but I think that was after these investigations right. began. So it seems that this was during the watch of Jeff Sessions. If he truly does not know about them, then that's also a problem because uh, the, the head of a department should know about the most sensitive matters uh, that are under investigation in his own department. So we either have a failure of notice or a failure of leadership. Right, especially when you are subpoenaing records for the White House Counsel. Uh, and as you said, that is unprecedented. Barbara McQuaid, thank you so much for being here tonight and for helping us understand the latest reporting on this story. Please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.